Cutting on my fingers. They're so tired. I've been working all day and my fingers hurt. I can't scroll. I can't do it. That's how you sound. That's it sounds ridiculous. By going to Starbucks, by going to the stores and enjoying yourself. Oh my god, your day was so hard. Oh my god, Melissa, your day was incredibly hard. The Bamboo Project Podcast starts in three. Two. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. I decided I'm going to help create 1,000 millionaires, including myself, and not by being a guru or selling a course, but by doing the things I already love to do every day and documenting the journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray, and this is how I will turn my life into a living. I want to start off by giving a shout out to everyone supporting us and the channel. We appreciate you. We are currently streaming on all major streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor. You name it, we on it. And if we not on it, we about to be on it. For everyone listening to this podcast and not watching it, you can find us on YouTube at The Bamboo Project. We have over 380 videos on our channel. Cooking tutorials inspired by Dr. Sebi, we got that. Travel lifestyle vlogs, got it. Makeup, got it. Hair growth, got it. Real estate, got it. Basketball, got it. It's everything us. All the parts of the journey that don't make it to YouTube will probably be on our story. You can find me at Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y, and my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne, A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. The Bamboo Project is about turning our life into a living by making money off the things we already do every day. For us, that's the food project, the music project, the clothing project, the fitness project, the sports project, and the Bamboo Project podcast, which you are listening to right now. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is chapter 2, page 78 of this story. So, if you are new, we have four segments on the podcast. We have the life update. On the way to creating 1,000 millionaires, we'll have our ups and downs a lot of downs all of that will be in the life update then we have episode playback which is a recap of last week's episode and the things i could have done better then we have donovan's question which is a question that i had earlier in the week that i wanted to present to you and see what your opinion is on it and then we have the topics of the day which is the fourth segment all video and audio timestamps will be in the description box below today's date is september 14th it is currently 6 10 p.m uh, if you guys are new listen that's very late uh, you know, try to, I want to get it done earlier. You guys know, I, last couple of weeks, I've got out a little bit earlier. Today, things were a little bit different. But I think if we can get it done before, like, 1, 12, I think that's, like, the best place to get it to. Uh, so, as you probably already saw, oh, almost forgot. Skipped ahead too far. I like to start off with screen time because I know that for me, I spend a lot of time on my phone. And I think that it can be a... It could be a, an issue as far as when I want to get things done or just kind of I, I feel like if I'm not in charge of my time, if I'm not paying attention to my time, then somebody else is pretty much stealing my time. So I have to go over what my screen time was for the week to kind of make me remember and just uh, kind of jog my memory about how much time I spent that week on my phone. Okay. Now, let's see. I'm not going to lie. I, I already know last week was not the best week. I, I just I just have I just know I just know it wasn't the week before that though was amazing but this week wasn't as amazing as last week um so I'm up 46 percent from last week that's already bad it's not good uh Sunday I was on my phone for six hours and 42 minutes Jesus Christ um and then on Monday I was on my phone for eight hours and 42 minutes that is so crazy and then today I've been on my phone for two hours and 54 minutes which is definitely better uh i think three hours on my phone it's already six o'clock that's good um hmm. so let's see what we got on here i want to go into the see all activity to see what i've been spending my time on each day for this week um all right so today it was safari was an hour and 27 minutes google was 39 minutes instagram i spent 34 minutes on which is great what was it yesterday? What was I spent so much time on my phone doing yesterday? Oh, ooh. I was on YouTube yesterday for two hours and 26 minutes. Instagram for an hour and 47 minutes. Hmm, the Wall Street Journal, 17 minutes. 
Yeah, and then what's it, is it YouTube, Safari, and YouTube? Well, I feel like I was watching like a um, that wasn't on my phone though. I was watching like an Alex Jones thing, so I don't really know if that counts. Either way, I just don't like seeing that my phone says on it for eight hours, damn near nine hours. It always just looks crazy to me personally. Um, so start off, you know, get to the life update. You guys have seen the title, so you know what's happening on on the Bamboo Project life. And before. I get to that actually um, Melissa sent me a video earlier in the week and it was about you know how like Google and Apple they'll just take photos from your your photo book and just or your your photo section whatever and they just make a movie out of it so they did that about our trip in Philadelphia I'm gonna put that right here and you guys can kind of see it and then that'll that'll kind of segue into what I'm about to talk about So I'll put that there. Uh, people who are listening, you won't be able to see it. It will be on the YouTube. Um, but I think it was funny because at the end of it, I said, well, let's see what happens next with the Bamboo Project and where like our next adventure is going to take us something to that effect. Right. And uh, we have bought a car on Turo. Right. So my main goal right now for the car that we bought, it was it's pretty much just see how it goes kind of learn the ins and outs of it so that when we can deploy more money into it we kind of will know where where our money will be used better or you know what the kind of what to expect because i wouldn't want to get too heavy into it let's say we buy like a maserati or something right and then the car payments are like i don't know fifteen hundred dollars for the car then insurance is another nine hundred dollars i don't i don't know what it costs for a maserati but let's just say we did something like that and then we found out nobody was using it or we got into a crash it's just like i'd rather not start off with that especially when we don't know all the ins and out of the business so we were recording a lot of it. It might, it should be a video. Again, we're like backlogging a lot of videos. I'm actually thinking about getting into like an editor situation where somebody can edit the videos for us because we probably have like 20 videos that are not edited. We have the Philadelphia one, the Carvana one. Uh, we went to the store to put the clothes in the store at one time. We have like different daily vlogs from different places. It's just mad videos that we have like backlog. And we can't afford an editor because what I've seen online, like things like Fiverr is kind of expensive for an editor especially for our videos. The one in the one in Philadelphia that we just went to was six hours of footage. So it's like in terms of uh, like cost to how much you would make on it, it's not, it, we don't make that much off the YouTube video. So to pay that much for it, it's kind of like, is it worth doing? And we don't have the money, we have no income because as you saw in last week's episode, unemployment is over and we don't have unemployment anymore. Um, so we got a honda crv right the car we bought it with carvana it was eighteen thousand dollars and it was uh i believe it was it it was like a thousand dollars down i believe right and they broke it down to it was like three hundred dollars for the actual car and the rest of the money supposed to go towards insurance now with uh that car right it, we look we did some math or some research and we can charge probably on the high end like i want to say comfortably like a hundred dollars a day on the high end i think 
uh, we're going to start off around like 60, 65 to get people in the door. And I think the sweet spot is like 85, 90. I think that's the sweet spot for it. So if we, if we book the car out for like, let's say 15 days out the month or 10 days out of the month at 80 to $90, we still kind of are able to cover our cost, which is great because we technically get a car for free at that point. Now, weeks ago, I mean, it probably is an episode about, I don't know which one it is. If I could find it, maybe I'll plug it here or something. But we had got, a credit card with capital on tap right and they gave us twenty thousand dollars now it's crazy because we actually got that twenty thousand dollars like right before we either i think right before we left to go to philadelphia or right before we came back from philadelphia and it was just crazy because that was that's the large amount of money that we've gotten like for a loan like on a credit card like we've never like that was crazy so i had taken some money off of that card to capitalize our business and then the rest of it right now is being put towards the paying off the car talk about your experience uh buying the car mm, it was easy like in terms of like yeah it, it, it kind of we were nervous because with carvana it gives you its financing terms like when you're actually looking at the car so they would still have to do like a verification process after, so I was very nervous about that. But we were able to use our business um, to finance, like to show proof of income for the car because we don't work. So that was pretty cool. Like, I, it's cool to know that they accept that. Um, mm -hmm. What else? <laughs> I think it was funny that I was on the phone with Carvana like 10 times in two days for different do documents and asking questions and. I didn't like that I would upload a document and then somebody would call me asking me for the document that I uploaded and I'm like yeah I uploaded it do you see it in my file and they'd be like oh okay yeah I, I see it and it's like oh cool is that all so um, only another thing I don't like is that it gives you the option to track your vehicle and our car is supposed to get here in two days and there's no tracking they send you a tracking number like yeah like not a tracking number of like in the app you know how like if you go on amazon you can track your orders or oh. it has that but there's no location for the car oh. so it would be like hold on we still finding the car i'm like still finding the car but you know i hope that our car is gonna be here in two days um i'm pretty sure it will be i'm not worried about that but I, it just kind of sucks that is there as an option and it's not being used. where's it coming from california Arizona. Oh. I don't know where it's coming from. Oh. Um, so another thing too, I've never really I don't think I've explained this on here. Probably haven't. Um, I use the term capitalizing the business very often, right? Now we took a, a course with for Airbnb called Airbnb Automated. That's the guy's course name. Um and so capitalizing the business is when you take money and you put it into your business, right? Now in the course, the reason why you said to do this is because when you show your bank statements to, you know, institution or a complex, right, they'll see that your deposits were whatever, let's say $30,000, right? Now, you don't necessarily have to have $30,000 in your account or even have had to have $30 to use for your account. But if you write a check to yourself for $5,000, let's say you have a friend do it to you, right? Or one of your family members, they write a check for $5,000. You put the money in your account. Now your your account says that you have a deposit of five thousand dollars. Now you can take that money out and do it again, and then it, your account will now say you have ten thousand dollars that will deposit into your account. So a lot of these places will want to see: Can you do you make enough money, or do you have enough money coming into your account to pay for these uh, the expenses? Right. So we we capitalized the business account like over the last couple of months, and it, it it's kind of funny because when we we uh how do I put this we were supposed to have been capitalizing the business from like months ago in the beginning of the year and i feel like it was it seemed more complicated than it actually was and i think we lost out on a couple of things by not doing it that early um but as you see now we learned how to do and we got the car we had like different amounts of money coming to our account because we're renovating a house in philadelphia right so what happens with that is they will 
the company that we borrow money from, the lender, it's called a hard money lender, they will deposit money to our account whenever we need to renovate something, right? So when they deposit that money, it will show up on our our check or our bank statement that says we got fifty thousand dollars deposit into our account now that money is then used to to you know uh fix the house so we don't actually get to keep it but it still says that on our account so we had like one or two of those in the last three months so that all as you know that's going to make your account look a lot better and then right at like the deadline when i took the money off of the capital on tap card that money was it was it was on the statement so that's another ten thousand dollars so it just looks as though we have twenty thirty thousand dollars in the, going into our account right now we haven't actually really ran this up crazy yet because we could make it out our account look like we make a hundred thousand dollars a month um so that's kind of the plan we have some more to do we're kind of a little behind but i think as of right now our account looks like it might have made like fifteen thousand dollars this month already and it's so crazy to me right that like the more money you work with the less like and i guess the, the less uh what's what i'm looking for um yeah like the less crazy the amount sounds because the fact that i'm like yeah man all right so we're gonna have twenty thousand in the account every month and we're gonna try and get it to twelve thousand dollars you know whatever the numbers i'm saying are it's so crazy because there was a point in time where those numbers were like four hundred dollars for me. Like, yo, if I could just make three thousand dollars in a month, that would be so crazy. If I could just get to fifteen hundred dollars in a month, I remember working at the YMCA, and it's like, look, bro, I, I just made a thousand dollars after working two weeks. Like, that's so crazy. And I remember my, my first check. I'll never forget. I was with my mom after the YMCA, and I got my first check that said I made one thousand dollars. I've never seen a check that said you made over a thousand dollars. And I mind you. I was so hell bent on getting to that number. I was working every day. I would come in like 30 minutes early and leave 30 minutes late to get that extra hour just to just to get $1,000 after two weeks of working, which is so crazy to me. Um, so, you know, now we're trying to get car. We bought a car for $18,000, paying insurance. Uh, we're going to put the car in Jersey because there's no tour allowed in New York right now. They're doing some businesses. It might come later. We don't know. We're still looking into that, but we're excited. We decided to do this uh, this business. I have a lot of ideas for Turo. I think that's gonna really help us. Um, and then if it works, we gonna we gonna run it up. We gonna go crazy. We gonna we gonna go crazy. Uh, with the house, uh, we got a call about the house recently. I think I was, yeah, I was on the phone for that last week. Uh, so you know that's about to go up. We're working on that. So everything's kind of coming together slowly but surely. Uh, if we could, was this September? If we got October. September, October, November, December. We got four months left. Four months. What can we do in the last four months of 2021 to really run it up? What do you think? Well, uh, you guys can't see it on the camera, but behind Donovan is a uh, three boxes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of jars for my candle business that I'm starting. I don't know if that was said on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So we could, that's one thing. Um, I just made. Mm hmm. A thousand dollars in five days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made over a thousand dollars. Like a thousand, one thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars in five days. Mm -hmm. Five days of me working, mm -hmm. like a slave for twelve hours, mm -hmm. but five days nonetheless. So, I think that that's helpful because that's almost as much as I would make, I would get in a month from unemployment, mm -hmm. and I made that in five days. And I talked to this is kind of just. I need to, I'm trying to work on setting my rate. So I noticed that I will ask people how much how much they're gonna give me. I'm gonna stop doing that. I listen. Two hundred fifty dollars for the day. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm gonna do that going forward. And that way I can secure if I work three days, I seven hundred fifty dollars. So mm -hmm. um that's what I'm thinking about doing going forward. Um how what are we gonna do to run it up? Yeah, I think it's the, oh, the YouTube videos. We made over ten dollars two days straight on YouTube. Facts, facts. The goal was to get over five. The goal was to make money. <laughs> the fact that we get paid more than pennies a day to me is still is the crazy thing already. So that's crazy. So if if we can, if I could work my little five days mm -hmm. and make the same amount that I'd make from unemployment, just just as a baseline. And then be able to sell the candles, mm -hmm. and then we and then we get those videos out for YouTube. And I really want to. I need to finish 
my coursework to get my appraiser mm -hmm. license. So I, I need to take my appraiser course stuff by October. So that's next month. Mm -hmm. And I, I've only, I've only finished one. I have four tests to take. So I want to get that out the way so I don't have to think about it anymore. I don't want to think about having to do that work. I want it to be done. Mm -hmm. And I get the access to the MLS because I think I could get it without having the trainee license, but we're going to see. But that, those are the ways to run it up, I feel like. Because once you get that access to the Georgia MLS, once we're able to, uh, you know, and I'm free from that, and we can get these videos out better because ain't nobody got no money for no editor. <laughs> Facts. And get these candles out and get these PA jobs that I feel like is, is working the thing. That I feel like the thing will be thanging at that point. Mm hmm Okay. Um, and Toro, I didn't even say that. Or Airbnb, I don't know. Or the car. And then, oh yeah, the, the business. I don't know how you. Too much. I don't know. I'm like, but anyways, that's that's. <laughs> listen, my brain is on those two things because those are the biggest uh, source oh, yeah. of income that we have. We discovered today that apparently I don't care about them. Actually, that 100 percent, 100 percent. We gonna come to that later. Figure that out because that needs to be addressed. But Melissa was saying that she now works a PA job, which is so crazy because, like I said, if y'all really been here with us, you can kind of see how things transpire and i think it's funny because now that i think about it i haven't really thought about the first time you almost had a pa job and it was a scam <laughs> <laughs> like that never crossed my mind again and i think that's so crazy yeah I, can i say who i i don't know how much i can say about the the last job that i worked on in terms of what in terms of like what it's about oh but i can i think i can say who is who starring in it yeah, so I guess yeah. I just worked on um, a show with uh, a show for Paris Hilton that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So I just think that is so crazy. It's so drastic that I was eating at fancy restaurants. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, just like, just, you know, it'll come out when the show comes out. Like I said, I think I don't know. Were you going to be in it? No, 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 no. I'm oh. Not, I'm not in it. Absolutely not. Oh. But like, the spaces that we were in, you you'd be able to see it. Mm. Um, but what was I gonna say? Yeah, I can't. Um, I just think it's crazy because what you said. I I went from about to be scammed for how much ever thousand dollars for a, doing a gig, and I was struggling. I felt defeated because I couldn't find a job, and no one was hiring me because I had no experience. Mm -hmm. I worked for free. I worked for free. In, in in Williamsburg, the roaches. That no, it wasn't. Oh, that, that wasn't the one with roaches. It wasn't that one. Oh, the oh. one I worked, I worked at with the roaches was paid. Oh. I worked. I worked in this. Is my my second job was in freaking Brownsville, if you know where that is. In Brownsville, Bruh. working twelve hours with the roaches in a suspicious ass house. Google Brownsville. Seventy-five dollars for the day. For the day, that's six dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. I feel like it's. Are you sure? I worked twelve hours. Oh wow! And they paid me seventy-five dollars for the day. Oof. That's six dollars. That's crazy. That that number just sounds crazy right now. Just to say, I'm like, what you mean, say like for the whole and day? And I was supposed to work here for the week, remember? And then the person texted me and was like, "Hey, can you work the rest of the days? I only work one." They said, "Can you work the the other four days?" for three hundred dollars hmm. yeah that's crazy yeah listen I, I i think it's crazy we have we have the video or the the podcast i didn't do it by the way yeah where where melissa was we were in here talking about like a whole check-in scam and everything um and now she can work she can work there five days out the week and pay for her monthly expenses like five days out of the month i mean and pay for monthly expenses and not have to do it again she makes like 250 275 a day and some people make more than that and i just think it's so crazy because when you are in it you don't really know what the future has like you don't really know like she said she was getting paid 75 dollars an hour not an hour a day uh there's no way to know that she was gonna be doing getting booked you know for 250 250 a day gigs for multiple days some people want her to work for like weeks so that could have been a couple thousand dollars and it's just like when those crazy things happen it's it's hard to just go you know what is it is what it is fuck it we're just gonna keep moving it's hard to do that it's hard same thing with airbnb it's like it's hard sometimes you just got to be like fuck it just, just let it go um but you know like i said we are 
we are moving forward so that's like she said that's a very good base the fact that we have that that, that she's making like eleven hundred dollars a month around that to just just to cover anything that comes up so that's that's a great thing to do so melissa is doing a video is on a set that's for paris hilton right now I don't really know anything about Paris Hilton, and I'm pretty sure, I just assume that most people listening to this do not. And I honestly don't know anybody personally that knows about Paris Hilton. If anybody that knows about her probably knows about her from shows like South Park or something like that. Um, or maybe you know her last name, which is the Hilton. And if I asked you what you felt about Paris Hilton, you would probably say, well, she's probably like a bimbo. She's like a dumb blonde or something like that. Uh, she's probably not very smart, Has a lot comes from a lot of money, just does stuff, you know, like rich white girls do with money, right? Now, that's my impression of who I thought she was. So, as I was reading about it, because, you know, Melissa's on the the on the, the set, uh, I was like, you know, I found out she did, like, a documentary about her life. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm curious to see what this is about. I don't really know anything about her. I'm just, like, I'm just curious to know what her story is, because this is how I look at it. I was thinking... Is this documentary that she's doing, or not documentary, whatever she's shooting right now, is that just a person who has money who is just making a movie? Because it's probably going to be a bad movie. Why? Because I feel like people who just have money don't have any creativity. I believe that creativity comes from struggle or from knowledge. Now, I also think that a lot of people come from money, like the kids who come from money, I feel like they don't read that much i feel like they also don't have to struggle so there's no real creativity which is why we see things like them come in and take in other people's culture because they don't really have nothing to do they don't really have they can't really dress they just buy the most expensive thing at the store they just copy everybody else because they themselves have not cultivated the uh i guess eclectic knowledge to make them more just more cultured right so that's what i was thinking about her so I'm like, okay, what kind of movie is going to be? It's probably going to just be a girl with money doing things that girls with money do, right? Like Kim Kardashian just running around doing nonsense, right? That's what I'm thinking. So I watched the document. It's on YouTube and it's free. It's called I Am Paris, I believe, right? This is Paris. This is Paris. Now, what I learned in this movie or this, this documentary is that I had Paris Hilton completely wrong, right? Now... For me, just hearing her voice was enough for me to know that she's been through something. Like she has, it's not just, oh, I have money and I'm rich. I feel like a lot of people who have money who are rich have like a very snobby persona. They have a very um, pretentious attitude. And I feel like they also have like a high pitched voice, usually if they're women, because they just like, oh my God, we just, ah, this is like, we just, they don't have no trust. Like they never had to subdue that because they never had to experience any struggle. Right. For I feel like people who have been through struggle, their voices sound very different. They just sound very kind of monotone because they're like, I know that the majority of things that I'm dealing with are either are probably not that serious. So, like, let's say you stub your toe. Right. And when you talk about it, it may not be it may not come across that big an issue. If you have broken your leg, if you are, a, a let's say, an MMA fighter, you're like, yeah, I stubbed my toe. Like, I that's nothing to me because I go into the into the ring and I fight and people break my leg all the time. So stub my toe on the door is not really that big of an issue. I equate that to her life because I would assume I would have assumed that she had not experienced anything like an MMA fighter that would have traumatized her just because she has so much money and her personality that she portrays on social media and online. Come to find out, right? She her parents had put her in a one of those um what do you call them? One of those character reform schools right it makes you wanna it makes you wanna they want you, you know you you know when you watch those tv shows they have the white women not white women the white families are like no you're terrible we're gonna put you in this school to make you better even they, they do the same thing with the gay kids right they want you to not be gay anymore so they put you in these schools that will change your personality to fit what they want so she went to several of these schools and in these types of schools she was running away from them why there was sexual abuse at these schools. There was physical abuse. They were medicating them so that they, according, they felt like zombies. They just had to sit down for the most part. They just didn't do anything. They had solitary confinement. They would just put them in a box in a cold room. I, actually, she said 
they would make her strip naked and or take her clothes off and then put her in these uh, solitary confinement rooms, right? And some people are there for years, some people are there for months, on end, whatever, right? So she was running away from these places because she just thought it was crazy. Now, here's, here's how you know this is a crazy place to be at. She was leaving the place and running away. And according to the documentary, she was running through cornfields, through mountains. Uh, I don't think they said deserts, but they, it was a lot of different types of not uh city areas right so you're thinking about trees forests you out in the middle of nowhere and you have to escape to just get away right and one time she got caught she got caught multiple times but one of the times she got caught they brought her back and they beat her up they beat her like beat her ass right like punching her beat her ass and i'm like yo that's crazy because that's not the kind of person i would think would act the way she's acting like i just not when you go through things like that, you don't really usually have a very bubbly personality. And you're just not like, oh, my God, the world is so great. I don't even have no issues. That's not really how you go through life. So it was a very big contradictory for me to even, just like I said, hear her, her voice in it. So this, is the, this was the thing for me that I felt like, oh, Paris Hilton is just built different. Like, she's a different breed of animal that I had. I have a, a deeper level of respect for her off of watching that documentary. The reason why is because... She came out of that place. She went to like four or five different places. And she was saying while she was in there, all she could think about was what she was going to do when she comes out, the branch she's going to build for herself when she comes out, right? Now, the reason why I say I have a very deep level of respect for her is because I know what it's like to have to push down everything you want all the feelings that you have to get something done and it's it's not like a, okay i'm gonna push through this moment so i can get to tomorrow it's like no 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 you're gonna push through this moment until you no longer have to push through this moment so when you go through something like that there is no other side you don't know if there's like a tomorrow you just i know that i'm gonna wake up every day for me one of those things was working like as a bike delivery guy right it's one of those situations where it's like you just wake up every day you go you get up you feel like a zombie go to work for 12 hours you ride your bike in the rain in the snow your bike gets stole it's just a lot of things like that right so you don't you don't really know what is on the other side of that and i think it's easier if i said to somebody okay you you have to be a bike messenger for a week you're like okay i'm gonna get through the week i can just do it for the week and i'll be fine but if I told you, you got to do this until I feel like telling you stop after like three or four months, whenever your breaking point is, you would feel like broken. And then you'd have to work four more months after that. Or whenever I feel like it could be two more years, it could be five years. You have no idea. So to just push that down and go, OK, as much issues as she's dealt with in her life and then to go out and become something else than she actually is because in a documentary they talk about how when she grew up she was not known to be stupid she was actually known to be very smart not only that she was even known to be very girly so think about that if you had an image of even, of paris hilton what it didn't translate right what you said what do you mean he said she was known to be he said you said she was known to be very girly yeah i mean well she is no like she is known to be very girly Okay. Yeah. So she's if you think about her, she's known to be a very girly person. She's known to be dumb. That's her like her persona is that, right? So think about how hard it would have to be to get up every single day. Every day for 30 something years and purposefully be somebody else everywhere you go. And you can't, you don't, everybody that sees you thinks that you are this, oh my God, yo, what's Paris Hilton? And you are not that kind of person. So let me, let me, let me think of an even better example. Let me think of a better example for you. To, to, I think to kind of drive the point home. I'm going to use uh, sexuality as my point. Let's say that you are straight, right? You're straight. Imagine how rough it would have to be for you, right? To pretend to be gay for 30 years that means when you go to the park you gotta pretend to be gay people talking to you about gay stuff you gotta pretend like you're into gay stuff you have to act gay you have to dress like a gay person you have to sound like what a quote-unquote gay person would sound like you have to go to gay places everywhere you go your image is you're gay right think about think about how hard that would be or if you're gay the other way being straight which is probably what you have to do for your life which probably is kind of crazy but that's what the, that's what it would be like right 
Now, the reason why I uh, have, I have respect for a lot more respect for her now is because she did it for 30 years, right? Which is a long time. And sh through that time period, she never told her mother about the abuse that went on in the school that her mother put her in. Here's how crazy this was, too. There was a situation where they actually, the her mom and dad had the school employees come to her house in the middle of the night and drag her out the house in the middle of the night while she's sleeping at probably like 14 years old and drag her out the house into a car and take her to some one of these crazy ass schools right think about how traumatized that is she said she still can't sleep to this day and she decided okay to make sure this never happens to me again to make sure that i'm never in a situation where i have to deal with that i'm going to become wildly successful and rich off of pretending to be a stupid dumb blonde even though that goes against who she is as a person and she did it so well like so well i can't think of any anybody that does not know who she is i can't see how you would not think that she was dumb and stupid i don't even does she come out and say she's not dumb i don't know you think about this you're going on interviews you gotta act like you're dumb. There was a scene they had in the, in the show, right? Where, it's supposed to be iconic. I'd never heard about this, but they asked, she was doing some reality TV show back in the day, and they asked her, I think she was like staying with poor people, something like that, something to that effect. And she was like, oh, <laughs> I think it's so funny that she did that. She was, they were like, uh, oh, we gotta go to Walmart. She was like, oh, Walmart, what's that? Do they sell like wall stuff there, right? And I'm like, I first heard I'm like did she really think that like it just was like what she was really that dumb to think that come to find out she was playing this character the whole time and towards the end of the movie one of the other ways that they show she played this character is I think in that same documentary the girls who she was classmates with they had saw her on one of the reality tv shows and she's like oh my god i don't know how to clean do i brew how do i brush how do i sweep i don't know what to do with this thing right and they were like that can't be the same girl we work with because we had to clean at the school every day so there's no way she'll know how to use a broom and a mop and scrub and a, and a sponge she knows how to do that and i just think it's crazy that she went her whole life pretending to be somebody that she's not um so like i said I, I've, I've definitely experienced that uh not i've never been uh, nah, I never, I definitely never been to that extent physically abused. Like I said, for me, the most traumatizing thing would probably be the college thing. That's up there. Um, I think that one was more jarring as to like how people really are. That one was that one was crazy because you really realize how people are when you need them the most. That's when I learned that. Um, and then the the bike messaging thing was just. You have to get up and do something you hate with a, like something that you hate to do every single day. Like you just have to do it every day for 12 hours a day. And then, then when you already defeated, you already hate the job. Then something works. You bike gets stolen. You lose money. Uh, you get into it. I mean, I, I, got, I remember I got into a bike accident one time. I had to go to the hospital for that. And I had like this, this, uh, this knot on my on my groin that was the size of a baseball. I thought I was gonna die. Like it was, I've never seen a knot on my bike that was so big. I was riding my bike. It was a regular bike, not electric. And I took my hand off one of the handlebars to like get my phone on my pocket. I think it took an order or something like that, right? And as I did that, I hit a pothole, went up in the air, and I my the full weight of my body fell on top of my handlebar because my my bike fell, and the handlebar was facing upward. And I fell on top of that. And I just, when I tell you, I thought I was going to die. I was like, yo, I'm on the train. I'm like, yo, this pain is so crazy. Like, I've never seen a knot this big in my life. And that was just one time. I had to the hospital. One time I passed out in my house. Thought I was going to, I thought my mom thought I was dead. So, like I said, it's just things like that you go through. It makes you a different person. And like I said, I, I can only imagine what type of person she, like, resolve she probably has. Um, So... Listen, I just definitely, that was something I saw during the week. I thought it was a very interesting situation. You know, if I, I think I would, she's somebody I'd like to have a conversation with just based off of that, based off of just watching that documentary. So maybe she did a really good job of creating another character. She does a lot of things. Yeah, she has, yeah, she has a lot of businesses and uh, she's very successful at the, uh, at what she does now. So the next thing on the life update, 
is uh, this real estate test kicking my ass. I took, uh, it's not really the test necessarily. So I have to like, it's like a certification. Certification. Once I take, like finish part of the course, I have to take a test for that part of the course. And I have to get an 80 to pass. I got a 72 the first time and a 76 the second time. So uh, this is, I had a piece of paper where I was like writing down the questions that I did not know. And out of 50 questions, the question I was like, mm, I'm not sure about, there were 22 of them. Out of 50 questions, there's 22 that I'm kind of like, is that A or is it C? I think it might be. That could be C. That's, I think that's C. And for me, that's that's an issue. I feel like I should know. It should be like, oh, check. I know that one. I know that one. I know that one. So, and I have to pay $15 every single time I take this test. I've already spent $30. I'm going to take it again tomorrow and see if I pass. We'll find out next week if I passed it or not. Well, I think between now and next week, I definitely should have passed it. Like I should, I'm, I'll take it a thousand times if I have to, but I'm definitely should have passed it by next week. Um, and they have a lot of like, bruh, the first person that had to, when I took it, I have, to have, I have to have a proctor and they have to watch you. So I think they have to get my phone out. They call me on some type of app or whatever. And they watch me. She was cool. Mad relaxed. Second person that had dickhead, absolute dickhead talking about, you can't have your microphone. Yeah, let me see, I'm gonna just, you see this? This is the one of the podcast mics. No wire in here, right? He told me I can't have this out. He told me that I, what was the other one that he told me? I have to rip up my paper once I'm finished with it. He told me that he, it was something other, it was one other thing too that he had to that annoy me. Just from Jump Street, I wasn't fucking with him. He was just, it was taking his job too seriously. And one thing I've been thinking about too, is that, is that a real thing? I've been kind of messing with this idea of like pride and taking a job too seriously and wanting to win because I know the issue I have personally, I think it's an issue, is that I don't want to lose, but I'm okay with losing, if that makes sense. And you think about people who have jobs, right? And you're like, you're taking a job too seriously. And then it's kind of like, well, what else would somebody expect them to do at their job? Like... I don't know if it should be an insult they take your job too seriously because you literally work there. That's what you're supposed to do. If I had an employee and somebody's like take your job too seriously, I would be like, great, you're doing your job exactly what I want you to do. So it's kind of just like one of those kind of back and forth things. Um, I had to see, I saw, I don't know if I screenshot it. Hunter had posted a, uh, a, a screen, like a picture or something a while ago. And it was something about pride. I don't know if I can find it. If I can find out, I'll maybe I'll post it or whatever. And I just been having this dilemma with how pride, with how important is pride? Like is, is wanting to, is not wanting to lose or be embarrassed an important thing to have? Because I feel like pride is demonized. I don't feel like ha being a prideful person is ever looked as, as a positive, but I don't necessarily know why being prideful is bad. Like, other than the people that have to deal with your pride, I don't know if wanting to win is that bad. Because, like I said, for me, I think about basketball. I don't want to lose when I play you. But I don't know if I am playing you as though I don't want to lose, if that makes sense. I think pride becomes a bad thing once you... Because I think, I think pride becomes a bad thing once you will do anything to win. But is that bad though yes if you're going to if you're playing basketball and now you're acting like it's football and you body slamming people and someone's taking a layup they're doing a jump shot and now you pushing their body so now they're not going to land properly like that's that's not good that's bad it is right but you're still winning and that's what i'm trying to figure out because so they have people like that in the NBA who do that. Yeah. Who will put their foot under you when you go for a layup or a jump shot. The guy, specifically his name was Bruce Bowen. They have to talk about him a lot. And when you come down, you sprain your ankle or people tear the ACL. But that's that's not, that is not, that's like a cheap, like that's, it's like slimy. It's nasty because you don't want to lose. Like because your pride is so, so much that you will, you refuse to lose, that you will do anything to like, even hurt people, even steal and do all these other things. Yeah, they're still winning, but it's like, it's just nasty. 
it's it's nasty. That's what I'm, but that's the thing though. Who cares if you're winning? That that's my whole thing is because so in an example I use his name is Bruce Bowen. They won multiple championships. Nobody discounts a legacy because they had Bruce Bowen who would injure people. Chris Paul, same thing, more or less. It's, I mean, I, I guess it's up to the individual person, but it's, it's, it comes down to your morals and your ethics. I want to win. Because what I've learned is, you know, from watching Billions and just kind of, I've really been thinking about this for a while. It's where it's like, once you win, you make the rules. You set the you set the history, you set the precedence for everything. So if I'm playing somebody, right, and let's say that I'm playing them in basketball and they foul me so hard that I don't want to play no more and I quit. I can't say I beat them. So it's like is that that's what I've been kind of battling with. Like, is that like bad? Should you wanna win? Do you wanna be a winner at all costs? And if not, why do you want to win at all? And then another thing, too, is that uh, the other issue is that that doesn't always stay within the realm of things that are competitive in games. Because then you, you try to win in your relationship. Yeah. You try to win. And, but you're not... I think that when things become more complex than just a game, in terms of like your relationship with other people, now you're losing things even though you're winning. But are you really? That's the thing, though. When you say you're losing things, are you? Lo- uh, that's not winning. You you could win your argument. Uh huh. And lose the person that you talk to. Um. Uh, hmm. I don't. I guess that could be losing. I don't know if that's losing. Why? Because they left. That don't mean. That don't mean you lost. You lost them. But that doesn't mean it's a, a L. Like if you if you have a player in your team who's not good and they leave, it's not like you like. I, but I that's mean, not, you're thinking in terms of a game, but like dealing with people is not a, it's not a game. Uh, that's not true. If you have a person that you are, uh, let's say you have a what, 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 you, what, if you have a girlfriend who is cheating and you lose her, did you lose? It's it's like different things because winning to you may not even mean that you're right. In that situation, no. It's it's, it could be whatever outcome you want is the thing that you got, and therefore you won. Yes. So let's say you win because now your girlfriend doesn't want to go out and she doesn't want to go to parties, but now she resents you for that, and then she decides that she no longer wants to be with you, or it comes out in other ways. Now she doesn't want to do certain things for you or whatever. You're losing that. Um. Sure, but then it's like, okay, if if the person we're talking about would consider that a loss, then if they did things to guarantee that woman does not leave, does that count as a loss? Did what things? Manipulation, buy her stuff, I don't know, be, he could beat her, or whatever, not, not saying being as good, but things make her stay. Because I'm thinking about it on like a win or lose situation there's there is no in between right because i think about it like if you are playing a game why are you playing if you don't want to win if you anything that you're if there's a win and loss in it why are you playing so that there is why are you playing so with the with the idea that you might lose but why are you playing with that you why are you playing and being okay with losing So you would would you, you would have to know what your limits and what your boundaries are because everything everything comes up everything goes down to the person that's doing whatever it is it, whatever winning is to you is subjective whatever losing is to you is subjective mm-hmm. whatever whatever your consequences may happen is subjective so it's like and whatever your morals are also is subjective so if I think that there may come a time with what you consider winning to be goes against whatever you consider your morals are. And whatever you do in that situation will change how you view yourself and how you move going forward. I agree. I agree with that. I don't necessarily know. Hmm. 
it just comes down to can you live with yourself after doing whatever it is that you're doing? And if you can't live with yourself after doing whatever it is that you're doing, you probably shouldn't do it. If I can live with myself winning, then it's like I don't care because I won. So it's like I feel like I feel like it's never that clear cut. Mm. Unless you have some type of uh, mental, like maybe incapacity to manage certain emotions and feelings, mm-hmm. like maybe like either I don't know if it's like like maybe a sociopath or or like a psychopath or something like that. I feel like that's the only time because I feel like in most situations. The, I think the thing that stops us from doing from going all out and winning all the time is empathy. And if you can completely cast aside your empathy, then that is a situation in which you would kind of cast everything away from winning. So then, okay, when is it okay to be a winner? When is it? Because hmm, I'm thinking about it like this. If you extend basketball or sports or whatever somebody counts as winning in their life. I know I have an issue with it personally, and I just, I don't understand it because I know that I'll play somebody, right? One person example I think of, his name is, his name is Rain, but I feel like it happens a lot with people that play in basketball, where they'll be going out all the way. Like they're trying to win the game, right? They do everything they can to win the game. They're very serious, they're very emotional about it. And I feel like I want to win the game, but I'm not going that hard against them to try and win the game. I'm not doing everything I know that I can do to win the game. And I don't know if that's a, I don't know what causes that. And I'm trying to figure out, should I, should I be trying to win as hard as they're trying to win? Because I'm okay with not winning. I don't want to lose, but I'm okay with it. I don't know how they feel about it. I feel like a lot of people, people have in my head that I've played in basketball one-on-one are like really not trying to lose. Like, it gets to the point, and I feel like it's so crazy. I think of four people in my mind I just thought about. Four people in my mind that came to my mind right now. They will cheat to win. And I'm like, I don't think it's that serious. But they want to win. So I'm like, should I, like, is that... In, this, in those situations, do they, do they win? They usually don't. But they want to win so bad, they will do that. And I just, because I'm not... Because I'm like, okay, I'll keep playing you even though you're trying to cheat. I mean, I don't think you, I don't think, I think that you, do they win? Like They usually don't. So what's the percentage of winning? Probably 80, 20, probably not even 80, 85, 15 maybe. Me, 85, then 15. Like it's, they usually, in one-on-one, I usually don't lose. So that's, it's weird because... And you don't care about winning as much because you win more often when you play them. That's 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 part of it. But when I but the thing is, I will I have lost. But you but the thing is, some people want to win. I think that's why pride is a problem. Okay. Because I feel like to have that sense of like, like pride. I think there's levels of everything. That mm-hmm. you, have to have. you don't have enough pride. That's a problem. In terms of like you don't have that's like this is like confidence. Mm-hmm. If you if you're in the middle, that's great. You know you're not overvaluing yourself. You're not undervaluing other people. You're kind of in the middle. Mm-hmm. I think that once you get all the way to the other end of the spectrum, that's because that's be, that that's because like how do I explain it? If you're doing things outside of the game or outside of the situation to win the situation, that means that you don't have whatever it is that you need to win. Therefore, whether that's skill, whether that's the knowledge, and you don't want to put in the work to gain that. Mm-hmm. You just want to, you want to win now. You don't want to train, you don't want to be Mr. Miyagi. But, but what if they are training? What if they are training? Yes. And they, you gotta train more. But see, that's, it's okay. It's either you train more or, you know, this is but this is my problem. Maybe you're like Melissa, you can't dance. We gotta dance more. I guess I've had situations where one of my friends wanted to fight me, throw my ball on the roof, because and cheat in the same game. 
so that they could win the game. And I'm like, it's not that serious. I don't understand, but it's like. But I lo- I've lost. I've never dis. Yeah, I lost to everybody I'm talking about, and I've won except for one person. I we only played like without one. Without them cheating. Have I lost to them without them cheating? Probably. I, I'm not gonna say I, they all cheat. They cheat every game, but I don't cheat at all to win. Like to win the game. So I'm like, if you have a better game than me, you hit more shots, whatever. I go, all right, it's cool. You won that game. I'm mad. I wish I want to play again. One on one. Yes, we talking about. Okay. Yeah, like I want to play again, but it's not like, no, no, no. I need, I'm going to call this call on you even though you didn't do it. I'm going to push you out of bounds. And I'm not doing that because I'm like, if you're better than me, then you're better than me. So that's just my thing. That's that. For me, I don't know if it's because I'm in the middle or if I feel like I should be further to one side. Because I know when I was younger, there's a time. Uh, I'll tell you about the basketball thing with, uh, I threw the ball at that, that my friend that yes. you met. Okay. Yes. yes. You said I wasn't your cousin. You know who it was. You met him. There was a time where I played basketball when I was probably like five. And we lost a game, right? We lost. And this kid on my team, friends with me, friends with family friend, right? I felt like it was his fault we lost. He wasn't doing nothing at all. I'm like, yo, this is your fault. So we got to the locker room. It was just me and him in there. So I took the ball and I kept throwing it at him. Now, they say I hit him in the face. I don't believe that's true. I don't think I did. I hit him like in his arm and stuff. We started crying. Honestly... Stop when he started crying. No, because he was faking it. Because <laughs> I'm like, why are you crying? I didn't hit you with the, in the face with the ball. You keep dodging. You keep hit, hit, hit you in your, your shoulder and your back. So why are you crying? But because honestly, now I think about it, it's two reasons. I think it's be. You know what it was? I think the story's been misconstrued. I I remember I was getting dressed after the loss and I was mad, and I think he threw the ball over the the locker. In the in the in the locker room, right, and it hit me, and I went. That's I took the ball over there, started hitting him with it, cause I was mad. I was already mad from the game, and then because of that, I'm like, "You suck!" And you hit me with the basketball. Now I'm gonna hit you until I feel like I hit you in a good enough spot where I feel like, okay, now I'm satisfied with. That's not the story. It's not, but I don't think that story is true. That's crazy. I just remember, I just remember that. So either way, uh, next thing on the list is we are not getting evicted right now okay why is that because we were able to get approved for twenty five thousand dollars to cover the rent shout out to the u.s government shout out to melissa why shout out to melissa you didn't pay for it yeah you need to because you're bugging what are you talking about shout what are you talking about Yes. What application you saw? What money? What money did you pay? What money did you pay, Melissa? What money did you pay? What money you mean? You you paid for the government to for this? Who did the paperwork? Did I have to sign anything? Did I have to sign anything? Who did the paperwork? Did I have to sign anything? I have to have to sign something. That live here. No, you didn't. I feel like I did. No, you didn't. I feel like I did. You did no paperwork. I feel like I did. I feel like I did. I'm pretty sure I had to sign something. If you say so. How did you sign something? If it was electronic, what did you sign? You probably showed it to me. I'm dumb, and you ain't signing nothing. And he says electronic, I don't know. Either way, either way, <laughs> Melissa. See, right there, you see? That's a pride thing right there. You see? Now, can somebody explain that to me? Explain that to me, right? Because me, I don't, I would I sure I don't know why you feel like that. I hear you, but that's an issue that we talking about on the podcast. This pride thing. Where it's like, I wouldn't do that. I don't I don't think I would do that because I'm like, yo, it's not that serious, but other people would do that. I've had friends that do that. Like, hey, what about me? What about me? Tell, tell them it was me. Tell them I and I don't feel like that. So you talking about me like it's you? What did I say? I said I did it. What did I say? Who podcast it is? It's Don of I'm it's my podcast, but it's the Baby Project podcast. Mm-hmm. You're part of the Baby Project. I host it, you produce it. Listen, when you when you talk about the things that you've done, you say you do them. Uh-huh. I'm saying that you can say you know sometimes Melissa did the X Y. What did I say? Melissa. What did I say? You said we. I said I didn't even think I said we. I, you know, no right. You know what I think I said? I said we don't have to pay rent. We didn't get evicted. That's probably what I said. Y'all can check. I can fact check it because I don't know. Y'all can fact check that. But that's what I thought I said before Melissa wanted me to tell you guys that she. You know what? 
And this is, I don't even know why. I don't, this is what they, this is what Melissa's kind wants, okay? So I'm gonna give it to her, okay? Melissa's kind. Thank you, Melissa, for filling out the application that got our rent to be uh, waived. I appreciate you. Because without you, we would have still have rent on the books right now. Yes. Yes. I was feeling unappreciated in our relationship. Get over that. Because it's not, I don't understand. I don't know what you, what you want me to do. Explain to me. Explain to me. Explain because I don't, I need help. I obviously am not showing you appreciation that you need for whatever reason. Now, I need, I don't, but I don't, I need help. What do you, what kind of, what do you, what examples are you talking about? I come home. I come home. You don't want to watch One Piece with me? Cut it out. That's not, not counting that. Cut that out. We're I'm not doing that. It. No, we're not. Because we every single time that I want to watch, just to see, you make yourself look bad on the podcast. How am I making myself look bad? I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to show everybody on the podcast how you make yourself look bad. This is how, right? Because this is a girl thing, by the way, that I've noticed, in my opinion, anyways, any, regardless. So, what is, what is that? Okay, so. I have been trying to watch One Piece for forever, right? Like in the last couple of months or whatever, right? I be trying to watch it. Melissa, well, I'm, I be binging it. Melissa goes, ah, oh, man, I'm tired of One Piece, man. I don't really want to watch One Piece no more. I want, can we watch Fire Force? Can we watch something else? I don't want to watch that no more. I'm like, we supposed to be watching it together. We bonded. We watching this shit. We, we, we go. We, this is the thing we want to do, right? That's what I'm thinking. So, over the last couple of days, we haven't been watching One Piece that much, right? We must have been going to work. Even before that, we wasn't really watching it like that anyways. Mm-hmm. It is true. Because we were doing... It is true. We were doing Toro and other stuff. We were barely watching. We would fall asleep. There were days we weren't even watching Toro at One Piece at night. You keep saying, uh-uh. That's true. There were days when we were working. We were working all the time. The last couple... The last week, we were working, like, the whole day. Oh, okay. And then at the end of the day, we would not watch One Piece. We would go to sleep. Mm-hmm. We would watch one episode, maybe. We were not but watching... You fall asleep. Let's get this clear. Donovan falls asleep earlier than I do. Melissa. Is that an issue? No. You gonna sit here and tell me you don't? Melissa. You gonna sit here and tell me you don't? Melissa. Because I don't, don't even know if that's true. Wake up in the morning and see what? I don't even know if that's true. Because I know I'll be telling you before I'm through before I point it out. So I don't know. I'm 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 a, listen. I will admit over the last couple of days, sure. But last week I don't know. Regardless of that fact, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that the intent to wanna watch one piece. You can't even say last couple days we haven't watched one piece in the last couple days because you've been watching. I'm talking about falling asleep. That's what I'm talking about. So, but anyway, besides that, we will try and watch one piece. Donovan falls asleep. One episode in, Donovan's sleeping. Half an episode in, Donovan's sleeping. I can't continue to watch it after that. Is this true or not true? So, here's what happens because Melissa likes to. Uh, yeah. He brought up the fact of us taking a break. That's because we watched like 200 episodes straight of One Piece. So what? And then we watched the other things, and then ever since then, what we've been watching. One Piece. I haven't complained about so, watching nothing else. I come home. So, okay. And I'm like, oh, listen, you make yourself look. I'm going to just. I'm going to just. I'm going to just. What are you. Listen, you work, Melissa. See? That's, I see? That's what it is right there. See? I, I told y'all. I told y'all. There it is. That's why women shouldn't work. Go ahead. What, what, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That that's, 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 that's what you're saying. That's, that's not what I'm saying. That is exactly that is what Melissa is saying. saying. It is. It's not it what I'm is. saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Listen. Not what I'm saying. Get off your chest. We're here now. Go ahead. It's not what I'm saying. Listen, you talk to me or talk to your therapist. One of us is gonna have to hear about this. Because this is exactly what it is. I know. I know what it is. Listen, I know what's going on. Melissa goes to work oh as a woman. I am not at work. And in her woman brain, it goes my excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You, you think that your body does not know that. So as I was saying, Melissa comes in the house and feels like I said it's I I got I got evidence for y'all. All right, because she knows she knows. Listen, this is the, this is what it is. This is why women have issues with men. So first, before I even get to that, first, what Melissa has failed to mention because this is what women love to do: love to just distort the facts because they'd be wrong so much. The last week when we were working. Pretty much all day. We were working every day. We, we were getting up, grinding and everything, right? I'll be finished what I have to do, right? I thought we wanted to watch One Piece. Melissa wants to do other things at nighttime. No. That, I, 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 yes, it is true. Because, 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 so then, no, 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 no. So then, so, so then, so then, when she's ready to watch One Piece, it'd be 1130. <laughs> 
12 o'clock. And then go, damn, Donovan, why you only want to watch one episode? When I've been ready to watch it from 9.30, she gets and goes, oh, okay, I finished all the other stuff. Not I'm not season. finished. Oh, so both That's, the same what are you, now you're making things up. So now, it this is what happens. So then I'm like not finished because you're wrong. And this is what happens when you date women. They be wrong all the time. And if you don't catch them, they'll run off with the story. They'll run off with this and you'll be telling everybody this. <laughs> Number two, again, this is why this is why I know that me not going to work is an issue for my list. I'm gonna tell you why. So she comes in the house yesterday, right? I've been watching Billions. Excuse me. <laughs> I've been watching Billions. It's a great show, phenomenal, mwah, amazing show, right? Chef's Kiss. Now, oh, oh, that's Chef's Kiss. I've been watching this this amazing, phenomenal show. It's up there with uh, House of Cards. It's up there. It's up there. Now, Melissa comes in the house yesterday. And decides no day before yesterday, and decides that she gonna after her after her long day of hard work, you know her feet on her feet all day, right? She comes in the house and decides she gonna turn the channel as I'm watching Billions, right? Now the audacity of her to do so. Now why would you think she could do this? Why? Because she feels like what she wants is more important. So she decides she's gonna take it upon herself to turn the channel. Now this is why. This is why men know in their heart that they cannot make less money than their woman for things like this. Because these are the things that men have to deal with when they don't make enough money. Now, I recognize my mistake. And it don't it don't matter because I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Right. I hear you. It will still happen. It will come out in other ways because it's in your DNA. And this, when women say, when women say, I don't care about my man's money, that's a lie. This is why, this is proof. So whenever, whenever, you, need, whenever you need, whenever you need, whenever a guy needs evidence. So that's why I apologize. Whenever a guy needs evidence, but what made you think it will be okay to do that is the first question that came to mind. The, exactly. That, it doesn't matter that you apologize. If I came in the house and punched you in the eyeball you be, and i said i'm sorry you go well that's fine no you know why because you're like why the fuck did you punch me in the eye that's what you want to ask me donovan why would you punch me in the eye yes i did not punch you in the eye i changed the channel which i still disrespectful. think is rude and it is disrespectful so apologizing is, it doesn't I matter do again but why did it happen in the first place we are not addressing this the, the root cause it exactly go ahead mm -hmm. me this. because you huh? can't lie yes Go ahead. The little image of Donovan, of Donovan's day in my head is Donovan watching TV all day. Yep. So, like I said. I'm like, I'm like, you be you home all day watching billions. Why can't I watch? Because I know how you are. You would just binge watch things nonstop all day. So it's like you was watching TV all day. And there's no you couldn't tell me you was watching you see? TV all day. Uh, depends on the what? day. One day I was. <laughs> one day I was. One day I wasn't. This is true. That's how I'm like, you know. It depends, whatever. Either way, I came home and I was like, mm. I want to watch like, One Piece, see, and turn the channel. Now, if this is the 1970s or 1960s, this would be a different situation because you would have gotten a whooping, a, a male, a, listen, I'm saying that it would be justified in the 50s and the 40s because it's so, like I said, this is, this is what men talk about, right? Because there's never no evidence. Here's evidence for all the guys. When you want, when you want to show up, when you want to show your wife, no, because this is this is what this is what women don't understand. This is what women don't understand. Women think that it was just this. If a guy, if I went to somebody's house, or even in my, if I just start changing people's channels, males' channels, that could be a fight. That's what you don't understand. You don't understand that. If I am at my my male my friend my male friend's house, and I just go, eh, come in the house. He watching a game. I turn to One Piece. He go, what the fuck are you doing? I be like, I don't want to watch that. I want to watch One Piece. He be like, what? Yeah, I don't care, bro. I want to watch One Piece. I've been at I've been at, at work all day. I come home to my man's crib. I don't want to watch that no more. Is it his? Is it his? It's not his. We could be roommates. It don't matter if I'm in my friend's. We we be, we could be roommates. Let me change the channel while he's watching it. I'm in college. Same thing. You can't just change the channel when somebody's watching it. But as a woman, 
You don't know that because it never caused you an issue. And this is the problem that men have with women is that they don't see this. And this is why I see this why, is I see why that's an issue. You see it now. This is why men always revert to what would happen if I hit you? Not because you want to hit women, but because if it was a male in the same position, this could possibly cause a fight. That is what I was trying to get to. So, moving forward past Melissa's transgressions, because this is what women... I see, I, I want to point it out, because I know women don't care. Women will hear this and be like, the guys will be like, exactly, bro. Exactly. So, can you scroll down, please? Or is that can I can I scroll? Oh, facts. Let's bring that up too. Cause we had some. Uh, you know what? It's gonna end soon. I didn't get the episode playback or the tops of the day. This is why. We gonna we got a little. We got another, maybe like ten minutes, maybe right five ten minutes. So Melissa decides today that she wants to start an argument with me. Right. This comes back to her working. That's not true. She does it all the time. Has to do her working. And you guys can let me know. Right? If I'm bugging or not. Oh, I'm never bugging because this is it's not in my DNA to be bugging. So mm-hmm. now that's what you think. Now but your pride is Pride. Listen, if I had let's see, if I was a prideful person, trust me, it would be a very different relationship. You that's what you think. You know how much times I swallow my pride? How much times I have to go, you know what? Is it really worth me going cr- No, it's not. I do that all the time. So I, maybe I should stop. Maybe I'll turn you off. I start acting wild in the house. Start breaking shit. Because obviously that's what you need. Now, as I was saying before Melissa. Be home, you go to see? She go to work for three days. Go to work for three days. Now I'm never I'm never even home now. I'm always working. I don't know. I don't what you mean. I'm never in the house. I'm about to go to work tomorrow. Oh my god. She worked for four days, Melissa. Oh my goodness. You remember the days where I was working for months, Melissa, every day for twelve hours a day you were not working i wasn't working you in the house I was according to you that's not working that's not what i said it is because uh, uh, you going out to work and me not being at work is in your mind not working so that means when i was at work and you was at home you were not working according to you no absolutely so as i was saying this is the last thing i gonna say before we end the podcast i'm curious how y'all think what y'all feel about this melissa decided her to show me her phone or her, her her laptop that her friend got an airbnb I'm my friend. your facebook friend your old classmate whatever she is it doesn't matter whatever she is i have a problem with it yes. so why are you talking about it <laughs> you see see this is and see see this is what i'm talking about i'm gonna throw water on her when she's sleeping that's what i'm gonna do right in her hair now as i was saying with melissa's friend because she's just being annoying think about this right she said hey my friend just got an Airbnb. I said, really? That's, that's crazy. Like, yeah, you know, uh, I think I said, where's this in Miami? I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that Melissa, uh, not Melissa, I'm thinking that her, her friend decided to just, her friend, it because it's not, it's her friend, crazy. I don't care. I don't care now. Now, I don't care. Now, it, the thing was. I'm thinking, oh, her friend just probably posted, oh, I got an Airbnb on her page, whatever, right? She actually posted the listing. Now, Melissa knows that I love to look at people's listings because we want to do Airbnb, right? So I go, oh, I wanna, I'm want i trying to figure out, oh, where is it at? You know, what's it look like? Oh, you got the listing? Let me see it. So I come over to the, to the computer and I go, hey, what's her occupancy rate? Melissa gets annoyed, right? And tells me look it up myself. Wants to give me the laptop to do it. And I'm just like, what is the problem? I'm like, what is the issue here? Like, I don't understand why you have an issue with this. So we start talking about it. And it dawned on me that Melissa does not care. Well, honestly, here's the thing. Melissa doesn't care about Airbnb and Turo. That's what I've learned. Melissa, does, I don't know. I don't know how. You know what it is? I think, I don't know. I think I want to do it. And she just does because I want to do it. That's what I think. So... Whenever it comes down to the weeds of it, I don't feel like she wants to talk about it. So I like to know the numbers. That's not Maybe. You you just look at things on a much more micro level than I look at it. You Melissa looks at it like, oh, that's a nice house. That's not true. I, I, listen. It's so not true. maybe. It's so not true. we maybe I don't know it's yet. It's not true. What about it is not true? Because I know the ins and outs and how to do the things. 
too as well. I, but I don't know if that's by choice or by necessity. By necessity. That's different. Because it's like it's, you're, you're almost being forced to do it. Yeah. That's well, different. That's what we're doing. What are you talking about? I want to have Airbnbs and tour and car. I hear you, and I want to not be broke. So we do an Airbnbs and tour. And see, and that is exactly. Musa does not care about the the car and the houses. He wants to just not be broke, which I mean, that's causes that's a that's conflict between us because she will show me a listing as she did today, and I'll be like, oh shit. I want to know how many rooms they got, how many beds they got, how did they furnish it, where is it at? I want to know, are they occupied? What's their what's their listing say? What kind of amenities do they have? You know why I want to know these things? That because it doesn't matter to why. You know how many questions? It, you excuse me, it, but his. I'm gonna finish. I want to know these things because we are going to do an Airbnb. That's why I want to know these things because I go, oh snap. What if she posted something that we might have to use that might help our Airbnb? You never know. She might submit her Airbnb that we could use. That's how I look at it. But Lisa goes, I don't care about this. I don't want to see this. I don't care about none of this. That's true. Okay, so now what part is true? Which part you about hear what? All the questions you just asked? You yes. Asked I did. And that's how, that's how your brain works. It is. So when you are looking at these listings, did you say what the problem is? That you don't care? No, that's not the problem. The problem is, I'll show Donovan something and then he will use me as a mouse for whatever he's looking at. So scroll up, scroll down, go to the next page. Wait, 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 that's too fast. Go back, go back. Wait, can you go like forward five pictures? Hold on, zoom out. Wait, 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 wait. Zoom in. And it's like, sir, just take the mouse. Just take the mouse and do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming from. Yes, now, uh, the reason why this is inaccurate is because it's not inaccurate. it is. Because here's how I assess the situation. Melissa and I will be talking about the same topic. Now, we have an Apple TV in the house, so we will put our things that are on the screen on the Apple TV, right? And she may say, hey, Donovan, I found this house. And I'll go, oh, great, where is it, right? She'll pull it up on the TV. I'll go, what city is that? Is that is that near our house? First question already annoyed her, right? I'll go, what must they want for it? Now she's annoyed even more. I'll go, hmm. Yeah, what zip code is that? I don't know what zip code that's in. I can't. She's more annoyed. And I'm just like, this is something that you wanted to show me. So I'm I thinking know that. I know that you would be interested in it. And I, that you would mm -hmm. have all those questions. Uh -huh. And that you would want to do a whole deep dive that you love doing all the time. All right. I just don't want you to use me as the apparatus to do it. And here's the problem. This is why we, like I said, this is the conflict that we have. When I have these conversations with Melissa, I think that we both care about the thing that's on the screen, which is not true. She is showing it to me, and that's it. She wants to no longer be involved once she shows it to me. But I'm approaching it as, oh, wow, we, 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 we are going to be talking about this thing that we are doing together. We are getting a, tour, a car for Toro. We are doing Airbnb. We were wholesaling. We are looking at houses together. So I'm thinking that if you pull it up on the screen and she is the one that's in charge of the laptop because it's on her laptop, if I go, hey, can you go up to that last picture? I want to see if there's a hole in that wall. It's, I'm not finished. So you saying it's annoying. What a part of it is annoying, Melissa? Yeah, you be asking a thousand questions. Like I said, I've identified the problem. Yes. There's sometimes there's different things that you it's that's what I'm saying, right? It's not like I'm disinterested in it. There's different either statistics or different things that you individually like to look at. Uh -huh. And you you might want to see how much how many radius feet away is it is it for away from X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z or you might want to see uh just different like number stuff and things like that that I'm not necessarily don't care about. Not necessarily don't care about don't care about and like i said whatever you're saying right now is not really true either but go on because whatever you whatever i ask you to do is within the parameters of whatever website website you're on so if we're on toro oh, i'm not saying that it's outside of the parameters i'm saying that you're looking at the little fine details and stuff to come up with something in your head of as to what this what kind of fine details are you talking about melissa that what because what's what i'm trying to say to you there's nothing that's on the page that is complicated to do scroll I'm down not saying that scroll up put a different date why, change the color of the car because you are the one with the laptop but melissa I, but that's the thing i i i know that i get 
get annoyed with this. So what do I try to do? I give. I try to give you the laptop. Yes. And say, here, you take this. Yes. And you could then guide me. Yes. The because you are the one coming up with the things to look mm-hmm. at. Yes. So that's how I try to solve it. Yes. Now there's a problem. Now you like, oh, well, I don't want to look at it at all anymore. And it's like, I try to give it to you because you're about to ask a thousand questions okay. to me or it's for me to do a thousand things so that you can answer your own questions when you can just kind of do that on your own. Kind of do that yourself. still. We can talk about it still. You could be like, oh, did you see that blah, 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 blah? How would you have seen it if I had the laptop? You ain't want to look at it when I was asking you what. Now you want me to show it to you after I looked it up? You ain't want to look. I'm literally, because you have it, I'm like, hey, the occupancy is the thing that we're looking but at on the screen together. But so that's the thing. Sometimes you don't say what it is you're looking at. Today was different. Melissa, it's you like that all the time. I always ask you to do something, and it's an issue. And my issue is that it comes with. And sometimes it's the actual question. Is this. Sure. Okay, then. What does that mean? So, if you just say and scroll down, I don't know what you're looking at. Why does that matter? So, then you're not doing it with me. You're just telling me to do something. What are you, what are you talking about? How does that make any... Okay, explain that to me. You asked me to scroll down, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know where you stopped. I don't know what sentence you're looking at. Mm-hmm. I don't know what image you're looking at. You just asked me to scroll down and stop. And I'm, like, and I'm waiting for you to say something. You're not saying anything. Mm-hmm. I asked you what's going on. You'd be like, oh, hold on. You're still doing whatever it is you're doing. Is that, is, it's not true. So I'll say hold on, right? And you're saying that I should not say hold on because I'm reading I don't something? Know what you're looking at. But that's like, because you're saying that like we're looking at this together and we're going through this journey together. And it's like, no, you're analyzing things on your own in your head and asking me to scroll. You, an example that you're talking about, we're talking about words on a screen. So if I ask you to roll to scroll down, I'm trying to read what's on the page, Melissa. It's an image, and let's say I don't know something about copper pipes or how to distinguish copper pipes from lead pipes or something like that. And you're looking at the image trying to see. Hey, can you go back to the last image? Yeah. You know, Donovan, for what? (laughs) Why? For what? You do it yourself. I'm like, what? What what, what was that about? What was the issue? You you want to see it? Do it yourself. I don't care, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's how you. That's how you are. It makes, as I said, you like that makes no sense. If you scrolling through the pictures, and I'm like, wait, I can't see them. Can you go back? And you get annoyed. I'm like, wait a minute. How about to- uh, I only get annoyed ten. Actions. Melissa, now you're not telling the truth because you got annoyed after the first question today. So what yeah, are you talking about? So there's no excuse. You gonna lie? You gonna lie right here on the camera after the first question every time? I know I'm right because you are not telling the truth. Annoyed. By what? By just I'm tired. By what? I'm tired From of what? Doing From doing what today? You didn't do any. What do you do? do what do you do today? I was going for mad hours. We, uh, you you know, did come fine. home today. You're right. You did go outside today and you went to go get your COVID test. Yes, that's what you did. Yeah. And then you enjoyed the city life by walking around and going to the comic book <laughs> store, by going to Starbucks, <laughs> by going to the stores and enjoying yourself. Oh so my tired. God, your day was so hard. I was so Oh my God, Melissa! Your day was incredibly hard. I did too. Oh, enjoying the sunlight. I was tired. I don't want and to you were too tired to do what? You too tired to do what? To look and look at the dates on the Airbnb. Yes. You are making up lies. You're making excuses. Now this is the problem that I had earlier. It's the same thing. This is the issue. And like I said, man, I know how y'all feel. I know every guy out there, Rico Paul. I know how you feel, bro. <laughs> I know how y'all feel because this is how women are. I get it. And every woman is probably, you know what women going to do? Because I know how women, I know how y'all are. Y'all going to be like, y'all, y'all are giggling because you're like, he's right. But y'all are like, oh my God, he's being so mean. Why is he doing that? I know how y'all are. And the men are like, bro, exactly. That's what I want to say. Because Melissa, like, in, you know, in the last words you want to say about how you were wrong, go ahead. I'm here. Why, 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 why is it wrong? Because your actions are wrong. They don't get to whatever the... the, the uh, you don't do things you don't want to do. Sure. I don't. Actually, no. Actually, that's... Sure. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. There are a lot of things that I do that I don't want to do. A lot. So what are, what are you about to tell me? Even with me. Do you believe there are things with you that <laughs> I don't want to do? That's what you trying to tell me? That you think that I'd be like, I, every time you ask them, I say no. Every time. You try to tell me. I don't do nothing you ask me. I didn't say Even that. if I don't want to do it. I didn't say that. I'm there are many a time I'd be like, I don't want to do none of this stuff you're asking me. And I will do it. For you. Really? 
you squint harder. You maybe. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. What do you think? I feel like what things are lumps? Um, maybe the dishes. The dishes. Sure, but it's not. This is my thing. For whatever reason, this is this is the issue that you that I don't understand where your mind is at with these things. I don't understand it. I. There are things I don't like to do that I will do. I have no problem doing them even though I don't like to do them. You, on the other hand, for whatever reason, when you don't like to do something, it becomes like a, a issue. It becomes like a, oh my God, I have to do this thing. That's the difference. I don't mind doing some. I'll do something I like to do. For you, no. That's not how you feel. I don't, I don't know what causes that. Like I said, I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm too nice. That's what it is. And I understand. That's what it is. I have to be more of a tyrant. Very nice. Trust me. I'm very nice. I can guarantee you for 100% certainty that I am. You are the benefactor of the nicest Donovan that has existed in the last 10 years. I can guarantee you that. Without a doubt. 100% certainty that you experienced the nicest Donovan that has been alive in the last 10 years. And this is why he is not nice. Because of things like this. Because I don't want to scroll on that. No, because you come here and turn the TV off. Those type of things. Those type of things. It's those type of things. Like I said, it don't, even if this whole convo don't even matter. It's, it doesn't even matter. Because it, you're going to do it anyways. This, this is what it is. Stress me out. I don't, that's not my intention. You say this every time on the podcast. And then we have another episode where you stress me out. <laughs> So, as you guys have heard, the rant of the Baby Project, we are at an hour and, oh, this says 27, not 32. But, uh, shout out to, can you scroll? Oh, let me, let me go do it myself. Time to ask you to scroll. No, 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 let me do it myself. Because obviously, yeah, I don't want you to have to do it. Because then, you might get stressed out. Let me get that for you. Let me get that for you right there. Let me just get, there we go. Because I don't want you to have to do it, you. Because, you know, you don't like to scroll. Because that was so hard for you to do. That, who? You, you want me to scroll, Donovan? Oh, my God. See, now, see how crazy that sounds? That's how you sound. That's how you sound. Donovan, you want me to scroll down the page? That's it. Oh, my God. You want me to go to the next picture? Oh, my God. That's so hard. It's so hard. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this? You want me to scroll so much, Donovan? Oh, my fingers. They're so tired. I was walking all day and my fingers hurt. I can't scroll. I can't do it. That's how you sound. That's, it sounds ridiculous, right? That's how you sound. It sounds ridiculous. Now, we will be back here next Tuesday. <laughs> You can find all the behind the scenes content on our social medias. Mine is Donovan Gray, D O N I V A N G R A Y. And you have the phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A N E T A B U R N. Now, we have six different projects, okay? We have the food project, the clothing project, the music project, the sports project, the fitness project, and the Bamboo Project podcast, which you just finished listening to right now. With that being said, no, that's not how it goes. You know what it is. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021. We going up all year. You know the vibes. And with that being said, Bamboo Project out.